We're Buddy Holly and the Rockabilly All-Stars, and you're watching CKWS TV. From CKWS TV, this is News Watch at 11. Tonight, a high speed chase ends in tragedy. The future of three hockey arenas takes center ice, and recycling reaches a new level. Good evening, I'm Julie Brown. Friends, family, and colleagues are in mourning tonight, remembering a man who dedicated his life to keeping the roads and highways a little safer in our region. Senior Constable John Flagg, a highway patrol officer from the Kingston area, was killed on the weekend in a high-speed chase. It happened on a rural road near Almont, just outside Ottawa. Flagg was following a stolen Jeep at a high rate of speed when his motorcycle slammed into the third vehicle. Witnesses say the 54-year-old officer never had a chance. He was thrown from his motorbike and died later in hospital. The injured driver of the Jeep, 37-year-old John Barry of Ottawa, now faces several charges, including dangerous driving causing death. The province's Special Investigations Unit has launched an investigation. The death of Flagg has shaken those who knew him well. Unfortunately, we've had two recent incidents of two friends of mine, um, first in May with um, Senior Constable Phil Shrive, who I've known for years, and then here with John. And no matter who it is, whether you know them or not, it, it touches you deeply, and they're both going to be very uh, missed. It's just, it's, it's very difficult at times. You know, you, you still have to keep going, and you still have to do your job, because John always did his job, so now we're doing our job for John. People who knew John Flagg said he died doing what he loved. He spent several years working in Kingston and Quinty doing highway patrol. His work was the focus of several Newswatch stories over the years. Chris Harvey now with more on Flagg's career. And we have the uh, unmarked... John Flagg joined the OPP in 1968 as a cadet and had been posted to the Kingston Detachment. He recently worked with the Eastern Region Ride Unit stationed out of Quinty. And his job was making area highways safe for the public, keeping drunk drivers off the road as he told us in this interview three years ago. We detect the presence of alcohol on a driver of a motor vehicle when stopped in a ride program. We uh, will demand that he provide a suitable sample of his breath. This uh, device, if it indicates a fail reading, that would indicate more than 100 milligrams of alcohol in his bloodstream. He would be arrested and taken to the nearest OPP detachment for a breathalyzer test. Constable Flagg was dedicated to his job and knew he was making a difference where it counted. We feel that with a positive deterrent effect, we may uh, combat impaired driving and hopefully reduce the uh, fatal accidents in the province. Flagg had strong local roots. He lived in Verona and had many friends in the area, and his co-workers find it hard to accept what happened. Well, it's very hard. Um, he was a professional officer. He always took very good care of his equipment. Uh, he always acted in a professional manner. Uh, John loved this job. In a lot of cases, the traffic will be flowing at uh, 115, 120 kilometers an hour. We don't bother with uh, the general flow of traffic. We're looking for the, uh, the obvious high speeders, the ones that are uh, catching up to the pack, tailgating, uh, intimidating drivers to move to the right lane. OPP Commissioner Gwen Boniface issued this statement about John Flagg. She says, John was an extremely dedicated police officer with a passion for traffic safety. He was very personable and always the gentleman. The uh, thing that strikes me uh, the most was whether I was at an investigation or in, in a community or at a function, uh, a lot of people would come up to me and tell me about uh, or ask me if I knew John Flagg and, and their comments would be, I know John and he's a good friend of mine. And I don't think there's another officer I know where that comment came up as much as it did for John. Constable John Flagg is survived by his wife, Joan, and three stepdaughters. Chris Harvey, CKWS Newswatch, Kingston. Constable Flagg's body is resting at the James Reed Funeral Home on Counter Street. His funeral will be held on Thursday at 11 a.m. at the Verona Free Methodist Church. Law enforcement officials from across North America are expected to attend. 
In other news, arson has not been ruled out as investigators try to figure out what sparked a huge tire fire at northeast Kingston over the weekend. The blaze started early Sunday morning at a wrecking yard at McAdoo's Lane and it burned for several hours. A smoldering pile of rubber was all that remained from Sunday's tire fire. Crews worked through the night to get the blaze under control and were still moving tires around and dousing them with water yesterday morning. Some 40 firefighters from the city and neighboring Loyalist and South Frontenac townships were called in. And because there are no hydrants in the area, 150,000 gallons of water had to be trucked in. Oh, the guys did great. We called in other tankers. Everybody worked great. Yeah, really great. Fire officials estimate as many as 15,000 old tires were dumped here and two-thirds of them burned in the blaze. And it was a tough job. We tried it with straight water, then we tried it with foam. We were trying to hold it, trying to knock it down. Then we eventually, after about a half an hour, we called in a, a loader, a large loader, and then we added, we cut the fire right in half. Allison says they had to move the tires to get to the source of the flames. Yeah, so there's a lot of heat generated. And uh, like it's, it's just, it, it just, you just can't get it out. There were so many tires burning at once, it was just too much heat, and you can't get out at the seat of the fire. You have to get in at the seat of the fire. And you have to pretty well, uh, let them, once we got it cut off, we just started pulling them out and most of it just, they just burnt down. Investigators have wrapped up their examination of the scene as far as environmental and health issues go, but that's not the end of it. There's investigators from the fire marshal's office, the Ministry of the Environment, Kingston Fire and Rescue staff, and at this point the cause of the fire is still undetermined, though we're certainly very suspicious as to how it might have started. Kidd says it could be weeks or months before the full investigation wraps up. News Watch's Bill Hutchins. Environmental testing shows there are no immediate health risks from the tire fire. In other news, St. Lawrence College is expanding educational opportunities for its students. The college is opening a new campus in Smith Falls early next month. Staff say the facility will provide a range of educational programs, including employer training services through the Department of Continuing Education and Training, and will offer a variety of part-time courses. Well, the city of Belleville has its finger on the pulse when it comes to recruiting family physicians. The Community Development Corporation wants to build a new medical center in one of the city's existing office buildings. It's hoped that a state-of-the-art medical facility will woo five to seven family doctors to Belleville. Negotiations with building owners will begin in the next couple of weeks. Assuming all goes well, it, it should be fairly quick. However, uh, at this point, it's hard to speculate other than just as quickly as possible. We, we are targeting to open this facility early in the new year, and as a result, uh, this cannot take forever. Wet, windy weather's upon us. Here's Bill with his first look at the weather. Yes, the showers could get heavy at times tonight, Julie, and we'll probably find the wind pick up tomorrow in the afternoon as the mess moves on. We are looking at periods of rain tonight, uh, possibly heavy at times. Uh, southeasterly winds diminishing. There's even a risk of thunderstorm activity. Some isolated thunderstorms moving through the region. region. You can see your temperature not rising very much from that low. As we get into west winds tomorrow, it will keep it cool and dry. Count on a sunny period or two, but the redevelopment of showers and the chance of thunderstorms comes back again in the afternoon. The full four-day forecast is up in just a few minutes. Thanks, Bill. Now here are today's stock market closings. Still to come on Newswatch, save the scraps. City officials are looking into a new composting plan that will help curb the amount of waste that makes it to the foot of the driveway. That and more, stay with us. for this program is brought to you by SNR Department Store, your first stop to shop for back to school. The summer sell-down is on again, Chef Olds, this Big G, and listen, it only happens once a year. The 2003s are now clearing out. There's over 300 to choose from, so selection has never been better. Cars, trucks, vans, 
SUVs, you name it, and virtually all 2003s, 0% up to 60 months. You can't beat that. Remember, again, Chevrolet, you always get more. So come on down. Take that scenic drive again in Aquay. The summer clearance is on right now. Don't wait. We'd like to know how this chicken dish is prepared. Oh, sure. It's a boneless chicken breast simmered in white wine and served uh, with garlic. Yeah. Do you have any, uh, like, kind of wings special? No, hot wings. You know what? How about this? Um, a cheeseburger for this young lady on a pita. And uh, he'll have uh, nothing. OK, thanks. Great. Thank you. Election Day is October 2nd. You're watching Newswatch at 11, brought to you in part by Ramekin's Restaurant, 1540 Bath Road. Casual fine dining. Hello, I'm Eric Walton, Green Party candidate for Kingston and the Islands. Some people think the Green Party only cares about saving the environment, but that's not true. Our platform covers health care, education, energy, children's issues, the economy, and much more. We have a full platform for a sustainable future. On October 2nd, send a strong message to government and vote Green Party. For more details, log on to www.kingstongreens.ca. In 79, they worked on my brakes. 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 And in 85, brakes. Brakes. It's important to have your car run well. I've taken this car to Midas for everything. Brakes. 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 Brakes are the most important part of my car. Right now, with purchase and installation of lifetime guaranteed Midas brake pads or shoes, get a free winter maintenance package. Lube oil and filter, tire rotation, antifreeze and battery check, and more. Free with Midas brake pads or shoes. Guaranteed for as long as you own your car. Midas. Auto service experts. The pipes have been fixed at the Kingston Memorial Center. A refrigeration meltdown last week forced the city to close the arena for several days, canceling the Kingston Frontenac's home opener. It's been problem after problem at the aging building, and with that in mind, the city is now looking at all recreational facilities to learn what needs to be done to bring them up to par. The first of three public face-offs was held tonight at the Cataraqui Arena. Close to 30 concerned citizens, along with politicians and city staff, we're on hand to discuss the conditions at the Cooks, Wally Elmer, and Harold Harvey arenas. The overwhelming sentiment, something needs to be done to all the aging facilities. Longtime supporter of the CAL says he isn't sure if the meetings will score some much needed improvements, but he's hopeful. Well, you know, it's, 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 it's overdue, but it's also been done before. So, you know, one of the reactions of a lot of the people who've, who've been around long enough is, you know, what's happened to the other studies? And, and you know, is, is there anything going to come out of this one that, uh, that better than what, uh, you know, was, was what came out of the previous ones? Uh, uh, it's deja vu all over again, but we're hoping that, uh, that something positive is going to come out of it because, really, the... Uh, there's no question that, the, uh, that our facilities need to be upgraded. A meeting for arenas in the former Kingston Township is scheduled for tomorrow night at the Cataraqui Arena starting at 7 o'clock. Well, the Kingston area's largest fundraiser for AIDS took place on Sunday. The 12th annual walk through the downtown streets attracted over 200 participants and raised $5,500. That's up 10% from last year. And the other thing that's up from last year is the number of young participants. Organizers say it's important to get more young people involved in their fundraising efforts. The money that is raised stays within the community. It's used for the various programs at HIV AIDS regional services, um, such as travel, medication, treatment, um, those types of things. So the money raised stays in the community that it's raised. Mothers and daughters were also lacing up their sneakers yesterday to raise money for the Heart and Stroke Foundation. And although the numbers were down, organizers are happy with the over $30,000 that was raised. 300 people took part in two or the four kilometer walk that started from Lake Ontario Park. One on the walk, okay? 
Are you going 2K or 4K? And that money all goes to research and education for heart disease and stroke. It stays in this area. So what you're bringing here today is going to stay here to help our local residents. Bill, we just finished with Hurricane Isabel, and now more rain is on the way. Yeah, and it's all coming from the same region, too. Southeasterly flow bringing us some uh, wet weather tonight, uh, coupled by another front from the west, kind of uh, reminiscent of what happened just uh, Friday as remnants of Isabel moved in from the south and a cold front from the west, which brought the snow to Calgary last week, sort of collided over the Great Lakes. Probably not going to see the wind get quite as intense, but we will certainly see a lot more precipitation as this activity continues to move. A low-pressure system to the north sucking all that warm and moist air from the south end. It meets up with this low and a cold front, and that's what's creating all this activity. A bit of activity moving in, but intensified by this flow from the west. And look at that, another low waiting to move in, too. So don't count on it being a real uh, bright and sunny week. Uh, we're looking at maybe a couple sunny breaks, but then back into more activity. Once this is finished with us, we could see about 25 millimeters of rain uh, tonight in some isolated areas where it's a little more intense, maybe up to 40 millimeters of precipitation as this front pushes through. The jet stream dipping down, temperatures uh, dipping a little, too. More than just dipping, uh, we're basically seeing uh, that southerly flow that we're getting this evening, preventing the temperature from falling. And then as this uh, front moves through, we get into a, a northwest current redirected by a westerly wind. We'll find uh, temperatures don't rise very much. So the point spread between your low tonight and your high tomorrow, not very much at all. And we'll see things dry up too. The humidity dropping as well as that west wind moves in to clear it up. That area of high pressure sending a weak ridge up. We're still looking at this low moving in, so maybe some sunny periods or a mix of sun and cloud Wednesday once we get this mess out of the way, but then another low moves in. It is what they call a frontal zone, one low after another pushing through and bringing us activity, and we will see some more showers come Thursday, hoping it'll clear up as we head into the weekend. A bit early to tell, though. Let's take a look at our stats for the day. Well, a high of 21.8 and your low 12.2. Record highs and lows, uh, 27.2 back in 1970 for record high. And on this day in 74, it dipped to 1.7 for your record low. Sun rising 653, setting at 706. And your UV index tomorrow, quite low. Not much to worry about in those odd sunny periods. Well, you might want to cover up if you're going to be out there for an hour or more. Forecast now down to 16 tonight, and we will find rain heavy at times. Uh, winds diminishing tonight. They will pick up tomorrow. We'll find the showers uh, probably end in the morning, and uh, there's a risk of a thunderstorm, too, uh, with that activity associated uh, with uh, the system overnight. We will find tomorrow, as it wraps up in the morning, we'll see cloud with sunny periods, a redevelopment of showers in the afternoon, again a risk of thunderstorms, but it will be moving out, and we hope for better weather. You can see that, like I said, take a look at those temperatures, overnight and daytime highs. Not a big difference. Cooler air moving in in the afternoon, gusting up to 50 kilometers per hour. Into Thursday, we'll see the wind level off a little bit. Temperatures rising again as we get into a southwesterly flow. Mix of sun and cloud for Belleville and Kingston. Brockville, pure sunny. Smith Falls, sunny with some cloudy periods in the afternoon. And those temperatures, daytime highs look pretty good. Thursday, we'll find, uh, well, yeah, back into a chance of showers. Again, everybody looking at a 70% chance. And still, aside from the Quinty region, uh, everybody else uh, a couple degrees uh, above, or at least a degree above the norm. The Marine Weather Report is brought to you by Kingston Hyundai and Smith's Falls Hyundai. Run with the winners. Uh, Doug Jeffries will join you in just a minute with Newswatch Sports. Let FW Black introduce you to the science of clean, the Gen Air Quiet Series dishwasher. Gen Air's racking flexibility means unsurpassed capacity, plus a stainless steel tub and door liner, stylish curved control panel, electronic touch controls, and an auto clean sensor cycle. The Gen Air freestanding gas range incorporates a dual-speed convection and baked broil oven, plus a dehydration feature that lets you dry fruits, flowers, and herbs right in your own kitchen. Gen Air from FW Black, 685 Arlington Park Place. This is to all you guys out there who love McDonald's french fries. To those guys who said, darn right, when we asked, would you like fries with that? We want to say, 
Thank you with our new Fry Surprise Game. You can win an all-new 2004 Ford F-150 FX4 truck or a 32-inch Samsung flat-screen TV when you buy medium or large fries. Expect the unexpected. McDonald's drive through open 24 hours. The critics put it on a pedestal. They called Accord the benchmark. Car and Driver named it to their 10 best list for the 17th time. The NHTSA gave it five stars for safety. And now, the Honda Summer Sales Event features 4.8% purchase financing on our much-praised Accord. Visit your Honda dealer and drive the car critics love and other cars look up to. Hi, I'm Dan Wanmaker from Kingston Family Fun World, and you're watching CKWS TV. You the artist? Yes, yes, I am. He's an artist, too. Really? And you work with oils, watercolors, acrylics? Meats. 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 Veggies. 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 Bread. 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 You see, in some way, it's about making things fresh. Fresh. Now you're getting it. Try any one of our delicious Subway Select sandwiches, like the Chipotle Southwest Steak and Cheese or the Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. You gotta try it. Now that's a nice piece. That's a coat rack. Subway! Eat fresh! There's a new look in home furnishings at James Reed Cattle Rockway. Come inside and see. From the area's largest independent furniture dealer, you'll find Eastern Ontario's largest display of fine furniture. Classic styles by Broyhill, Barrymore, and Bernetti. A large selection of beauty rest bedding by Simmons. James Reed Furniture buys the best from Canada and the U.S. so that they can offer you the best. Come see the new look at James Reed Cattle Rockway or visit their downtown location on Princess. Good evening. The Kingston Voyagers continued a busy schedule tonight, hosting the Lindsay Muskies at the Cataraqui Arena. Evan Robinson's club was playing its fourth game in five days, but you would never know it. It was a fast-paced game that took just over two hours to play. It ended in a three-all tie. Andrew Fournier, Steve Radcliffe, and Ryan Decarell did the scoring for the V's, who had two goals called back for questionable reasons. Kingston is off until Thursday when they host the Coburg Cougars. Well, it's a rivalry that goes back to the old days of the American Football League. The NFL Monday Nighter is being played in Denver, and so far it's been a one-sided affair. It's late in the third quarter, and it is a blowout. The Broncos lead the Oakland Raiders 31 to nothing. Saturday's loss at Richardson Stadium to McMaster was absolutely heartbreaking for the Queen's Golden Gales. Still, it was one of the most exciting, wildest matches I've ever witnessed. It lived up to its billing and even more. Mere words can't describe the final minute of play, so we'll let the pictures tell the story. It's tied 20-20 with less than a minute to play in regulation time. Gales are deep in their own territory. Tom Dennison fades back and unleashes a bomb. A 50-yard strike to Craig Spear, and away he goes. Everybody is on their feet. It's a miracle in the making. With 28 seconds left to play, Queens is ahead, 27-20. And here's the play they'll be talking about for years to come. Jesse Lumsden picks it up. Couple of Gales will have a crack at him, but he gets away makes a cut to the inside of the field, and away he goes. Nobody will catch him. An 89-yard touchdown run. The crowd is stunned, totally speechless. The extra point is good, and with eight seconds left, we're tied at 27-27. And, of course, the uh, Mac bench uh, certainly has reason to celebrate. They will win in overtime, 30-27. You know, there are highlights you love to watch over and over and over again, and that definitely is not one of them. Well, to baseball now, where Roy Halladay was out to break a record, most wins in a season by a Blue Jays pitcher. But uh, he'll have to wait another three or four days for win number 22. The dock lasted only six innings. He was ejected by the plate umpire after hitting Rocco Baldelli in the back with a pitch. There you see it, the Rays win 5-2. to two. Well, soccer is one sport where the equipment hasn't changed much since the sport was invented. Shorts, a shirt, and soccer boots. But concerns about a particular kind of injury, concussions, have led to the introduction of a new piece of equipment. Kelsey Maviti should be enjoying her freshman season in varsity soccer, but the 19-year-old can barely walk, let alone run. All a result of a series of concussions she suffered playing soccer. I've been hit in the head so many times that I think 
I don't know what caused this to come about. Mavidi's condition is so severe, she'll never play any sport again. Bring your knee up to your chest. Scott Delaney is a Listen sports medicine step. doctor who has okay. studied concussions in different sports. Concussions in soccer are just as prevalent as they are in what people consider more violent sports, such as football and ice hockey. It's not heading the ball that's the problem in soccer. It's the incidental contact that takes place when the game is played at full speed. But now there's something new on the market that's promising to reduce the risk. It's called the Full 90, and it was designed by a soccer dad in San Diego after his teenage daughter suffered a series of concussions that ended her career. Nothing too complicated here, just a thin layer of high-density foam that sits flat against the head, helping disperse the impact of any blow. The Full 90 is receiving a number of high-profile endorsements, including one from the woman considered to be the best player Canada has ever produced. This is helping me to play longer, and if it, if it does, then I'll wear it. But traditionalists like national coach Evan Pellerud says he's not convinced soccer players even need head protection. If somebody can prove it, I will consider it. I haven't, we haven't seen the proof yet. And although it's too late for Kelsey Maviti, she says if she had the chance to do it again, she'd do whatever it takes to protect her head. Karen Larson, CBC News, Vancouver. And to end our sports tonight, here is your golf tip of the day. Today's CPGA golf tip of the day is a presentation of clickandsell.ca. Here's CPGA professional Gordon Mink. Most people have a difficult time hitting a bunker shot to an elevated green. The easiest way to do this is to lay your club head perfectly flat on the ground, walk in, and set it down so that the grooves are facing your target. Take your stance based on the ball being in the middle of your stance. I'm gonna take a swing along my body line in a V-shaped motion, finish. The ball will go in the direction where the club face is pointing, not the direction the way I swing. So it's quite simple, just like this. And I'm Gordon Mink, and that's your CPGA tip of the day. And that's your look at sports. News Watch continues with Julie in just a moment. You the artist? Yeah. He's an artist too. And you work with? Meats. Meats. Veggies. Breads. In some way, it's about making things fresh. Try one of our delicious Subway selects, like the Chipotle Southwest Steak and Cheese or the Sweet Onion Chicken Teriyaki. Subway is fresh. Beautiful. It's not easy being a male supermodel. OK, Dylan, take a break. Oh, man, I'm exhausted. Seriously. Smiling all day? <laughs> I mean, that's very fatiguing. It's like a supermodel sandwich. But also. You have to make a pouty, sexy face. That's a little angry. Well, not angry. Dangerous. Dangerous. It's hard. If he deserves a break, you certainly do. Have a break, have a Kit Kat. This beer and new crisp wrap. I feel like watching videos. I feel like cartoons. I like that one well. Digital cable, high-speed internet. What do you feel like? Kojiko, life's just better with cable. I'm Rick Walker from the new Thousand Islands Toyota in Brockville, and I want to show you how we ensure your overall car buying and ownership experience is the best it can be. At Thousand Islands Toyota, we believe that our people make the difference. We pride ourselves in hiring and keeping employees who are dedicated to going that extra step for our customers. They are committed to making your car ownership experience a positive one to keep you coming back. The new Thousand Islands Toyota can only be found on Highway 29 North, in Brockville, of course. I believe tax cuts create good jobs. They fuel a strong and growing economy. I believe that our taxes are still too high. That's why I will abolish the provincial property tax for seniors, to make it easier for them to stay in their homes. I will also allow you to deduct some of the interest you pay on your mortgage, making home ownership possible and more affordable. Dalton McGinty disagrees. Experience tells me what you believe matters. Now you can enjoy Eastside Mario's at home. Pick it up, take it out. At Eastside Mario's, there's always more to make you sing. Hey, bada boom, bada bing. 
Finally tonight, Oscar the Grouch may love trash, but our landfills certainly don't. The city is looking to curb the amount of garbage that ends up at the foot of your driveway. It's looking at developing a separated organics program that would see leftovers collected along with your recyclables and regular garbage. Newswatch's Tom Steep explains. Coming soon to a curbside near you, one of these green composting boxes. The city is considering implementing a separated organics program. The program will be used primarily to collect kitchen organics, things like fruit and vegetable scraps, coffee grounds and eggshells. Other items such as pet waste, litter and non-recyclable materials like tissue and paper towels could also be included. The bottom line is we're trying to increase the diversion from landfill. We're currently in the neighborhood of about 44 percent and this will take us well over 50 percent, close to 60 percent. Composting not only reduces the amount of household garbage generated, it's also beneficial in gardens as a soil additive and mulching agent. Composting is easy. Simply collect your kitchen scraps in a small receptacle like this one and empty it once or twice a week. It's collected the same day as your regular garbage. Those will be collected in the same truck, but in a separate compartments in the same truck. And also your blue box materials. So you'll have those three items collected at the curb weekly. Similar composting programs are in use in cities like Toronto, Guelph, and the Durham region. But the estimated startup cost for citywide composting is high, between one and two million dollars, or an extra twenty-five dollars per household. The city also needs to set up a large facility to store the compost. The site is a possible site is the Knox Farm, but we we're just mentioning that because it is a possible site, and we we haven't really looked at it yet. Whether we'd be doing it within the municipality itself, or whether we'd be sending it out to a private contractor who would be composting it possibly outside of the municipality. Those details have yet to be figured out. The compost study comes on the heels of the city's decision this spring to reduce the number of untagged garbage bags to two per household. Tom Steep, CKWS News Watch, Kingston. Open houses will be held in the next month or so to collect public input. The compost program could be up and running by next year. And Doug's back with a final look at sports. Well, the Tampa Bay Devil Rays uh, continue to give the Blue Jays a hard time. They beat Toronto again tonight, 5-2 at Sky Dome. Roy Halladay took the loss. He was trying to win his 22nd game, which would be a Blue Jays record. Uh, Jack Morris and Roger Clemens uh, had won 21, so Halladay will have to wait three or four days to win that uh, 22nd game. And the Voyagers and Lindsay played tonight at the Cataraqui Arena, and they played to a 3-0 tie. Excellent. Thanks a lot, Doug. And that's all the time we have for tonight. Have a great night, everyone. Good evening. beautiful became in 1960.